Okay, so uh, let's have a look on the derivation of Paul Langevin's paper. I've just put the equations on here. Uh, it's literally a paper of one and a half page, and the reference um, is given here below because the paper was not published in English. And these guys, uh, Lemons and uh, Gittel, they've done a great job in uh, translating it. And uh, there's an introduction of one page before the paper uh, dealing with the differences between Einstein and Smolikovsky and the discrepancy behind below. So it's, it's, it's a pretty pleasant read. So it'd be nice if you could have a look. And, uh, but the essence is given here. So if you look at the top left equation, in a way which we saw before, is that that force, so inertial, is, is mass times acceleration. So it's mass times the first derivative of velocity, m times dv dt. And then you have drag force on top of that. And the drag force is minus 6 times pi times the viscosity times the radius of the sphere times the velocity. And then the clever thing, what Langevin did, is that he added plus x. And x stood for random stuff. Random stuff being Brownian motion. Yeah? So, if you, would, if you would rewrite this equation for displacement, yeah, then you would get the one below that. So, you get mass times the second derivative of displacement is minus 6 times pi times the viscosity times the radius times the first derivative of displacement, because that's velocity, plus, again, this x. So, so we've seen before that if we would link um, kinetic energy to thermal energy, we would get the expression on the top right. So mass times uh, the velocity to the power 2, so that's the first derivative of displacement to the power 2, equals RT divided by the number of Avogadro. Yeah? So, and here, so that was the first brilliant part of his derivation. So he had the second expression, and he had this plus large x, which stood for Brownian motion, or random, a random chaotic event. Now here's the next brilliant bit. He multiplied both sides by x, little x. Yeah? And then he ended up with the expression that's, this, that's given below. That one, if I would multiply both sides by x initially, looks a little bit bizarre. Yeah? So you get a longer expression here now um, that basically links the second derivative of displacement minus the first derivative to the power 2 equals then dx to the power 2, yeah, which is not the that's not the same as, as dx, so the, it, that's basically x times x, dt, plus this random event times little x. Now, in order to understand the transition between the second equation and the third one, the bottom one, on this slide, the hint is that you have to apply the product rule twice for dx times x over dt. Yeah? So I'll go through it first, and then you know, we'll have a little break. And if you want, you can try this out and see where you can do it. So we have the top equation after we multiplied by x. Yeah? Then he basically said, OK, let's introduce a parameter z. And z basically is dx to the power 2 dt. See, this x to the power 2 gets close to this mean square displacement, right? So if you would replace dx to the power 2 dt by z, you get the expression given below. m over 2 dz dt, because that was the second derivative, plus 3 times pi times the viscosity times the radius um, times z, equals RT divided by the number of Avogadro. This RT comes from 
the top bit on the left. So m times dx over dt to the power 2 was the same as rt over the number of Avogadro. So he switched them around. But that's the expression you've got. And if you look at this expression, it's just an ordinary differential equation. Yeah? You have the first derivative in the first term of z. You have the original one, z. And then you have a constant, rt. So you could solve this. And if you solve this for z, the generic solution is a constant, rt over n times 1 over 3 times pi times the viscosity times r plus something that's a function of time. And z was defined as dx squared over dt. So this something bit we saw before, that was the time delay there, yeah, of this ballistic, of this ballistic distance. So that's gone. So this thing fades out. For time becomes infinity for large time scales, this doesn't really matter. It's zero, the second term. So what you're left with is this constant thing here. And this constant thing here, if you look at it, dx squared dt is rt over number of Avogadro times 1 over 3 times pi times the viscosity times r is exactly the same equation as Einstein found. It's exactly the same equation as Perrin used in order to measure, in this particular case, indirectly the number of Avogadro. So in, in these two slides, you sum up the entire theory that Einstein derived, and, and Langevin did it in a really elegant way. Okay. What I want to do now is, like, take a little break now, because that would be best, because after this, we're going to go a little bit crazy with swimmers, and I need your imagination. So there's no physics in that, just some thoughts. So we'll take a 10-minute break. Now, for those who want to, I would say, you know, have a go at... Uh, going from step two to step three, see whether you can do it. Okay. <laughs> 